Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today we will cover anterior compartment of leg. First of all the contents of the superficial fascia of leg. There are many cutaneous nerves of the front of the leg which will supply the skin of the leg. Number one is lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf. See here in this diagram. See here in this diagram the lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf. It is a branch of the common peroneal nerve and it supplies the skin on the upper part of the lateral surface of the leg. See here this is the lateral surface and this is the upper part of the lateral surface which is supplied by the lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf. Number two is superficial peroneal nerve which is also the branch of the common peroneal nerve. Okay it supplies the skin of the lower part of the anterior lateral surface of the leg. Then there is saphenous nerve which is the branch of the femoral nerve and it supplies the skin on the anterior medial surface of the leg. So these are three cutaneous nerves which are supplying the skin of the leg. They are present in the superficial fascia of the leg. Now there are many superficial veins which are present in the leg. These are great saphenous vein and the small saphenous, saphenous vein. Then many lymphatic vessels which are present in the leg. The great part of the lymph from the front of the leg it drains into to the vertical group of the superficial inguinal lymph nodes and a small amount of lymph from the upper lateral part it will drain into the popliteal lymph nodes which are present in the popliteal fossa. Now we will discuss that how many compartments of leg are there. The deep fascia of the leg which is also called as fascia cruris, it surrounds the muscles of the leg. From its deep surface, anterior and posterior intermuscular septa. See here, there will be two intermuscular septa. One is called as anterior intermuscular septa and one is called as the posterior intermuscular septa which will come from the deep fascia and it is attached to the fibula bone. See in this section there are two septa which are present here. One is anterior intermuscular septum and the another one is posterior intermuscular septum which will come from the deep fascia and attach to the fibula and divide the whole leg into three compartments. Number one is anterior compartment. See here this is anterior compartment. Then there will be lateral compartment and there is posterior compartment. This is posterior compartment which is divided into three compartments. Number one is superficial posterior compartment, then there is middle posterior compartment and then there is deep posterior compartment. So as a whole there are three compartments anterior lateral and posterior compartment the lateral compartment contains two muscles which are peroneus longus muscle and the peroneus brevis muscle and the nerve is superficial peroneal nerve which supply the lateral compartment of the leg then there is anterior compartment which has many muscles which are tibialis anterior muscle extensor hallucis longus muscle extensor digitorum longus muscle peroneus tertius muscle okay these are four muscles which are present in the anterior compartment of the leg and the deep peroneal nerve which is a branch of common peroneal nerve is a main nerve of the anterior compartment of the leg an anterior tibial artery which is the branch of the popliteal artery is the artery of the anterior compartment of the leg then the posterior compartment it contains flexor muscles there are many flexor muscles which are present in the posterior compartment and the artery is the posterior tibial artery and the nerve is the tibial nerve which is the nerve branch of the sciatic nerve. So it is the branch of the sciatic nerve which is supplying the posterior compartment of the leg. Before discussing the muscles of the anterior compartment of leg, I will tell you the bones of the foot. See here, first of all this is tibia which is the bone of the leg and it is the medial bone. Then this is fibula which is the lateral bone of the leg. Okay, tibia will articulate with the talus. See here, it is articulating with the talus. Fibula is also articulating with the talus. Okay. So this is tailless bone. Only the tibia and the tailless bone they will articulate with one another to form the ankle joint. Okay and the fibula will also contribute in the formation of the ankle joint. So tibia, fibula and tailless bone they will articulate and they will form the ankle joint. Okay then this is the bone tailless 
tailless bone remember this thing behind this is the heel bone or this is called as calcaneum or calcaneus which is the biggest bone of the foot this is calcaneum this was tailless anterior to the tailless there is one bone which is called as navicular bone navicular bone and anterior to the calcaneum there is one bone which is called as cuboid bone cuboid bone okay then medial to the cuboid bone there are three small bones which are called as cuneiform bones these are medial cuneiform on the medial side in intermediate or middle cuneiform in on the middle side and lateral cuneiform on the lateral side okay so again i will repeat this is talus okay then there is calcaneum then there is navicular bone then there is cuboid bone then three bones which are cuneiform which are medial cuneiform middle cuneiform and lateral cuneiform these were tarsus this they are forming tarsus or they are tarsal bones okay just like carpal bones in our hand we have tarsal bones in our foot then we have metatarsal see here we have five metatarsal bones which are long bones which are present in the foot they are just like the metacarpal bones of the hand then we have phalanges okay we have phalanges three phalanges in each finger but two phalanges in the big toe this is toe these are not fingers they are toes actually we will call toes of the foot so this is big toe this is second toe third fourth and fifth toe the big toe is also called as hallux so any muscle which is called as hallucis means it is attached to the big toe okay so these are the bones of the foot tarsal bones metatarsal bones and phalanges of the toes tarsal bone include talus calcaneum navicular bone cuboid and cuneiform there are three cuneiform bones then there are five metatarsal bones and there are then 14 phalanges in the toes then see here there are some joints which are present in the foot first of all there is ankle joint which is formed by the tibia fibula and the talus bone it is also called as tibio talar joint ankle joint is also called as tibio talar joint then there is talo navicular joint when talus bone will articulate with the navicular bone okay then there is tarso metatarsal joint which are formed between the tarsal bones and the metatarsal bones then there are met metatarsal phalangeal joints which are in between the metatarsal bones and the phalanges there is subtalar joint also see here subtalar means below the talus so it is below the talus joint then there is calcaneo cuboid joint which is in between the calcaneum bone and the cuboid bone okay this talo navicular because navicular is present anterior to the talus this is calcaneo cuboid because cuboid is present anterior to the calcane so these are some of the joints which are present in the foot now i will tell you some of the movements of the joints of the foot see here these are the uh, movements which are shown here first of all this is flexion of the foot see okay flexion then this is extension extension of the toes extension then this is inversion of the foot inversion when we are moving our foot on from on the inner side then this is eversion of the foot okay eversion when we are uh, facing the sole of the foot on the outside this was the facing of the foot on uh, sole of the foot on the inside this is inversion and this is eversion then we will discuss the dorsi flexion and the plantar flexion dorsi flexion means when we will move the dorsi dorsal surface of the foot on towards the leg okay towards the uh, dorsal surface of or the anterior surface of the leg this is dorsi flexion then we have plantar flexion when we will move the dorsal surface away from the anterior surface of the leg or we will move the sole of the foot toward the posterior surface this is called as plantar flexion of the foot
Now we will discuss the muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg. Number one muscle is tibialis anterior muscle. It is obvious from the name that it is attached to the tibia on its anterior surface okay or anterior part of the tibia. See here it's, it is originating from the lateral surface of the shaft of the tibia and the interosseous membrane okay. Interosseous membrane is in between the tibia and the fibula. It is inserted over the medial cuneus form i hope that now you know the bones of the foot so which one is medial cuneiform the medial cuneiform is the medial bone among the cuneiform bones which are three medial cuneiform middle cuneiform and lateral cuneiform so tibialis anterior is inserted over the medial cuneiform see here this is medial cuneiform and it is also inserted over the base of the first metatarsal bone first metatarsal is the metatarsal of the big toe okay over the big toe side so it is inserted over the medial cuneiform and the base of the first metatarsal bone okay it is supplied by the deep peroneal nerve remember this thing deep peroneal nerve is the nerve of the anterior compartment of the leg it is the branch of common peroneal nerve which is the branch of sciatic nerve okay what is the action of the tibialis anterior it will dorsiflex the foot at the ankle joint now i hope that now you remember or you know what is dorsiflexion of the foot dorsiflexion of the foot at the ankle joint and inversion at the subtalar joint inversion when we will inward or we will move inward our foot toward the inner side at the subtalar joint subtalar is a joint below the talus bone okay it is sub, it will support the medial longitudinal arch of the foot you can see here there are arches of the foot uh, below the foot these are called as arches we will discuss the arches in a lecture in a separate lecture okay so i will discuss the tibialis anterior again it is originated from the lateral surface of the shaft of the tibia and the interosseous membrane it is inserted over the medial cuneiform and the base of the first metatarsal it is innervated by the uh, deep peroneal nerve action is dorsiflexion of the foot and at the ankle joint and in version at the sub tailor joint okay and it support the medial longitudinal arch of the foot number two muscle is extensor digitorum longus muscle it is obvious from the name extensor it will extend digitorum it will extend the digits longus it is a long muscle it is attached to four digits okay or four toes uh, it is originated from the anterior surface of the shaft of the fibula okay from the fibula it is inserted over the extensor expansion of the lateral four toes which are second toe third fourth and fifth toe it is also innervated by the deep peroneal nerve which is the nerve of the anterior compartment of the leg what is the action action is the extension of the toes and dorsiflexion of the foot at the ankle joint extension of toes and dorsiflexion of the foot at the ankle joint so this was extensor digitorum longus muscle now the peroneus tertius muscle see here this is a small muscle which is originated from the anterior surface of the shaft of the fibula it is inserted over the base of the fifth metatarsal it is present on the lateral side okay so it is inserted over the base of the fifth metatarsal it is also supplied by deep peroneal nerve and action is dorsiflexion of the foot and eversion of the foot at the subtalar joint and transverse tarsal joint remember Remember this thing all muscles which are inserted over the medial side are inverters or they will do inversion and all muscles which are inserted over the lateral side they are everters or if they will do eversion of the foot okay this is the most important point which you have to remember so tibialis anterior which was inserted over the medial side was doing inversion and the peroneus tertius muscle which is inserted over the lateral side is doing eversion of the foot now the fourth muscle which is extensor hallucis longus it is obvious from the name extensor means it will do extension hallucis it is inserted over the 
the big toe and longus because it is a long muscle so it is originated from the anterior surface of the shaft of the fibula and it is inserted over the base of the distal phalanx of the big toe there are two phalanges of the big toe one is proximal phalanx and one is distal phalanx so it is inserted over the distal phalanx of the big toe it is also innervated by deep peroneal nerve it will extend the big toe okay all muscles which are present here in the anterior compartment of the leg are extensors okay they are extensors and it will do dorsiflexion of the foot and inversion because it is inserted over the medial side so it will do inversion of the foot at the subtalar and the transverse tarsal joint so these are four muscles which we have discussed there is fifth muscle which is present deep to the four muscles which are extensor digitorum brevis muscle extensor because it will do the extension digitorum because it is inserted over the digits and brevis because it is a small muscle sometime we discuss this this muscle in the muscles of the sole of the foot and in some books it is not included in the muscles of the anterior compartment of leg but we will discuss this muscle here also it is originated from the calcaneum bone see here it is originated from the calcaneum bone and by four tendons it is inserted over the proximal phalanx of the big toe and extensor expansion of second third and fourth toe so it is not inserted over the fifth one okay and it is supplied by deep peroneal nerve it will extend the toe again i will repeat it is originated from calcaneum okay it is inserted over the proximal phalanx of the big toe and extensor expansion of second third and fourth toes okay it is supplied by deep peroneal nerve and it will extend the toes so we have discussed five muscles here which were in tibialis anterior extensor digitorum longus peroneus tertius extensor hallucis longus and extensor digitorum brevis muscle which was originated from calcaneum the four muscles which we have discussed before out of those four muscles only the tibialis anterior is originating from tibia otherwise the extensor digitorum longus longus muscle the peroneus tertius muscle and the extensor hallucis longus muscle they are originating from fibula so remember this point and all muscles which are inserted over the medial side will do the inversion of the foot and all muscles which are inserted over the lateral side will do the inversion of the 